Good morning. It is Friday, July 24th, and it is day 22 on the court. And today is a special day because it is a day where we celebrate Pioneer Day. Um, July 24th is the anniversary for Utah, and so it's a Utah holiday. Of the, it's the anniversary of the day when Brigham Young and a company of pioneers arrived in the Salt Lake Valley and they established Utah as we know it today. And I think um, it's good for us to reflect on our forebears who have gone before us and who have allowed us to enjoy the comforts of life that we enjoy today. Um, that was back in 1847, July 24th, when Brigham Young and the first company of pioneers came after they had been forced out of their homes in Illinois. And we often call it the days of 47. We have days of 47 parade, a rodeo, lots of fun things to celebrate those days um, to help us to remember. And I think whatever state you live in, and whatever, whoever your forebears were, I think it's good for us to reflect upon who they were, whoever they were, whatever country you live in, whatever um, city you live in, that you can kind of maybe do some research and see where you came from, um, where your, your family, your forebears came from, and, and how you came to where you are today. And I think we take for granted some of the the conveniences that we we have and enjoy and it's good for us to reflect and appreciate the um, wonderful things the conveniences the luxuries at times that we enjoy today um, i thought today would be a good day for me to appreciate not only my forebears but also to reflect upon the history of basketball. So that's what I'm going to share with you, some really cool things that I learned this morning as I was researching. And I will also include in the links below the links that I found that describe the history of basketball and it's really fascinating. So I'm gonna give you kind of the history in a nutshell. The game was actually invented by a man who was from Canada and he lived in Springville, Massachusetts. His name was James Naismith and in December of 1891, that's a long time ago, that's more than 100 years ago, he invented a game that the men could play indoors instead of playing football. Um, it was very, very cold in the winter, and so he tried to think of a game that was not only uh, friendly for the weather that you could play indoors, but and would be challenging because if it's not a fun, challenging game, you know, the guys aren't going to play it. <laughs> And, but it was also something that would be less injury prone than football. So it was a, a game that he concocted and came up with a peach basket and a soccer ball originally. The um, way to get the ball out of the basket, they didn't have a hole in it until Sometime later, they would they would have to retrieve the ball out of the peach basket every single time. Eventually, they put a hole in it and would poke it with a stick to get it out. <laughs> so the basket was placed on a pole. So right here we have our basket, and there's this big pole. But they just had a straight up and down pole with a peach basket on it, and. There was no hole, it just, you know, they'd have to 
pull it down each time and get the ball out. So eventually, as the boys were playing this and practicing this game and learning the rules, they, uh, James decided that it would be better to have a hole in the bottom so the ball could go through. And it wasn't until 1906 that he invented the iron ring and the woven net and replaced the peach basket with that. And then of course the backboard was added because they figured that it was more convenient to have the ball be able to bounce off of something and into the basket. And they replaced the soccer ball with a spalding ball and he did a lot of experimentation to get the right ball. And um, they introduced dribbling to the game in 1892, a year later. Um, until then it was passing and lobbing the ball and popping the ball to people. And, but then um, they added that element of dribbling in a year later in 1892. Basketball took off at this point because at first it was a game that they're like, oh, a new game, what are you gonna show us? But then when they played it, they loved it. And they wanted to name it after James Naismith, the Naismith ball, you know, Naismith game. Um, and uh, James said, well, you have a basket and you have a ball. Let's call it basketball. <laughs> so that was a good thing. I, I can't imagine calling this Naismith game or Naismith ball. <laughs> I just can't imagine that. But I think he had some great insight to call it basketball. And um, he was a Canadian physical education instructor, which is interesting because in th this game took off and in 1936 it became an official Olympic sport and they actually played it outside and and they had a, a court outside and the first Olympic title was won by the US national team and the Canadians came in second <laughs> so that I think that's interesting because he was actually from Canada but the top two teams were from Canada and, of course, United States, which would make sense. He was the creator of this and created it in the United States first. But um, back in 1893, which was a couple years after the game was first introduced, the first women's game was played. and the first women's team was created. And I think it's interesting, the picture that I saw with the first women's team, they were all wearing dresses. <laughs> 1893, mind you. So these nice big, you know, sport dresses. <laughs> Lovely. I think we've, we've evolved very well <laughs> with the type of uh, clothing that we can now wear on the court. But, um, I think it's wonderful how the game has evolved over the years to become the game that it is today. In 1937, the NBL was formed and it's the first official pro basketball league, so the National Basketball League. And then another league was formed and then they merged together in 1949 to create the NBA, which is the National Basketball Association that we know today. And so I think that's interesting. I, I just wanted to read the original 13 rules, just briefly. These are found on Wikipedia, and I'll give the link below. There were only 13 rules of basketball when James first created this game. Number one, the ball may be thrown in any direction with one or both hands. We can still do that. Number two, the ball may be batted in any direction with one or more hands, one or both hands. <laughs> Number three, a player cannot run with the ball. The player must throw it from the spot on which he catches it. Allowances to be made for a man who catches the ball when running at good speed. So that's the only way that they would 
transport the ballast from one person to the other by throwing it but if somebody's running pretty fast then that's good they have an allowance that they don't have to stop on a dime right <laughs> number four the ball must be held in or between the hands the arms or body must not be used for holding it so that's still the same today number five no shouldering holding pushing tripping or striking in any way the person of an opponent shall be allowed the first infringement of this rule by any person shall count as a foul the second shall disqualify him until the next goal is made or if there was evident in intent to injure the person for the whole of the game no substitute and that just goes to to show the reflection of James desire to have a less injurious sport and to show respect on the court number six a foul is striking the ball with a fist violations of three and four rules three and four and such as described in rule number five number seven if either side makes three consecutive fouls it shall count a goal for opponents there was a lot of incentive to keep them from making fouls. Number eight, a goal shall be made when the ball is thrown or batted from grounds into the basket and stays there. If the ball rests on the edge and the opponent moves the basket, it shall, be, it shall count as a goal. Number nine, when the ball goes out of bounds, it shall be thrown into the field and played by the person first touching it. In case of a dispute, the umpire shall throw it straight into the field the thrower in is allowed five seconds. If he, allow, if he holds it longer, it shall go to the opponent. If any person persists in delaying the game, the umpire shall call a foul on them. Number 10, the umpire shall be the judge of the men and shall note the fouls and notify the referee when three consecutive fouls have been made. Number 11, the referee shall be the judge of the ball and shall decide when the ball is in play, in bounds, and to which side it belongs and shall keep the time. He shall decide when a goal has been made and keep account of the goals with any other duties that are usually performed by a referee. Number 12, the time shall be 15 minute halves with five minute rests in between. Number 13, the side making the most goals in that time shall be declared the winner. In the case of a draw, the game may by agreement of the captains be continued until another goal is made. And these are 13 rules that were found on Wikipedia. I'll include the link below. Well, with this in mind and with the thoughts of my forebears, those who have created the wonderful conveniences that I enjoy today and also reflecting upon the people who helped to create this um, amazing game of basketball and James Naismith who was the founder and the creator of it in the beginning. I am going to go and make some baskets in not a peach basket but a basket ball hoop. <laughs> I hope you have a great day. Remember your forebears and I will see you tomorrow.